Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Bonnie Grimaldi, and I'm so glad that you chose to worship here this morning. As I make some announcements, please consult your bulletin inserts, and um, there'll be more info in there, and, or check in the church office. There'll be an all-church pool party today at 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Dover City Pool. And you don't have to swim, just, I mean, if you like to swim, that's great. It's a beautiful day to swim. Um, if you don't want to get in the sun, you know, you can get under an umbrella or something, but bring a chair and fellowship with everyone, and hopefully we'll see some new people from our VBS community. Tomorrow begins our Vacation Bible School. Finally, we've been anticipating this, and it's here. And we're going to have a food truck party on a roll with God. If you haven't registered or you know someone who uh, wants to go and hasn't registered, come at 5.45 p.m. tomorrow, and you can register and, and join in the fun. And next Sunday is our VBS Food Truck Sunday, and there will be only one service. So one service next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And we'll be presenting our VBS program. The children will be here, and we will have a food truck party afterwards in the fellowship hall. And we pray for our VBS volunteers and our children who'll be magnifying God's love this week. And we continue to pray for all those suffering from the war in Ukraine. We pray for God's guidance of the world leaders in ending this war peacefully. And now we turn our hearts and minds toward worship with our prelude.
Please stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
you may be seated for our lessons. The first reading for this Sunday is taken from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous, prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord again will take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors when you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us that we may hear and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. We'll read responsibly Psalm 25, which is in your bulletin. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you to be put to shame, rather let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You lead the lonely in justice and teach the lonely your way. The second reading for this Sunday is taken from Colossians, first chapter, beginning with the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, your brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossia, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we have always given thanks to God our Father for of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid for you in heaven. You have heard this hope before in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you just as it's beginning fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard and the truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Ephesus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made it known to us your love of the Spirit. For this reason, since this day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God, God's will and all the spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work, and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints and the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord.
The Gospel according to the 10th chapter of Luke. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Do we have any uh, young worshipers with us today who would like to come forward? Yes. Okay. Wow, look at all these children today. This is wonderful. Okay. Come up. Oh, okay. We've got a few that moved forward, but not all the way. Okay. That's fine. Uh, you know, everybody's welcome up here or there, wherever you are comfortable. Um, good morning, children. Do you, I wonder if you know who Doc or Mr. Rogers is? You, oh, Jamie knows. Do you, uh, Ava and Olivia? Yeah. Have you seen this guy? Okay, and I don't know if you've seen any of his old TV shows, because, yes, okay, and he's got a, a, there's been a few movies made, too, a documentary and then a Tom Hanks movie, but they're really good, I think. Um, well, he had a TV show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and he would say at the end of the, every time he opened the show, won't you be my neighbor? Okay, um, I could probably sing the whole song, but you, we could all sing the whole song, the whole church probably. Um, who would be your neighbor? Who, tell me a few of your neighbors. Do you live near anybody? You, yes? You, um, you can say a first name if you want. Okay, Bo and Jackie. Okay, okay, that's good. So people who live close by. Well, Mr. Rogers thought everyone was a neighbor, even anybody lived far and near. And in our Bible story today, we have a lawyer that came up to Jesus and he said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, what does the Bible say? And the lawyer said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself, to paraphrase it. And Jesus said, yes, that's right. So um, do this and you will live. But then the lawyer said, wait a minute, who is my neighbor? You know, like I just asked you, who is my neighbor? And so Jesus told a parable, he told a story. And he said there was a Jewish man walking along the road and he got beaten 
and uh, left for dead and robbed and in a ditch. So he was lying in the ditch and two religious people pass him by and you know just keep going. And then there was a Samaritan that came by. The Samaritan was considered an enemy, but the Samaritan looked at this man and he had pity and he had compassion. And so he helped him out of the ditch and he helped him you know, with a lot of things. He took, he took him to an inn and paid for him to stay there. And so this is, uh, so Jesus is saying to the lawyer, which one of these men, three men, were a neighbor to the man in the ditch? Okay, Olivia. The Good Samaritan, yes, the Samaritan. The enemy, supposedly, of the Jewish man. And um, so we find that um, Jesus wants us, that's what Jesus wants us to do. That's what he means by our neighbor. So that, that's, that's pretty heavy duty. Um, so let us pray. Say, dear God, help us be a good neighbor and love everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. You can go to Children's Church. Please pray with me. Dear God, may we move from belief to compassionate action towards every one of our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The parable of the Good Samaritan is so well known that it has become a cliche in our culture. We have Good Samaritan laws, Good Samaritan hospitals, and whenever someone does a charitable act, we call them a Good Samaritan. But you know what? This parable means much more. If you've been coming to church for a long time, you probably have heard this parable at least 100 times. Have you ever noticed how preachers will focus on the two characters who pass by the beaten man and the one who stopped for help? And then the end of the sermon, they'll ask, which one are you or which one would you like to be while I was preparing this sermon this week, I said, wouldn't it be interesting to look at this parable from a different perspective? Why not look at the man beaten and left for dead? Why not identify with him? We might get a very different perspective on this story, but unfortunately, there's a problem. It's not easy to identify with this victim. In the first place, it's unlikely that any of us has ever been left for dead in a ditch. Furthermore, many of us have led fairly comfortable lives. So again, it's difficult to even imagine ourselves as robbed, stripped, beaten, and left for dead. So maybe we should look at this differently. Can you recall a time when you suffered? All of us suffer in some way or another and who hasn't had some kind of a setback during their lives. Maybe you've been robbed of your possessions when a thief broke into your, into your home, or robbed of time and energy when someone let you down. Perhaps you've been treated unjustly, and you know what it's like to be beaten down having made the wrong decision with devastating results or felt stripped bare when someone rejected you when you were counting on their support. Maybe you were rejected by someone who told lies about you and tried to harm your reputation. Or rivals were seeking to ruin your career. Perhaps it's even more devastating when you discovered that there was nothing you could do to relieve the pain of it. 
to some degree, haven't all of us felt helpless or at one time or another? Don't we pray for God's mercy when we feel the chips are down? Isn't this why we come to church and to this altar for the true bread that gives life and saves us from despair? So while we're identifying with this victim, what do we make of it? Was the beaten man deserving of the help he received by the Samaritan? What did he do to deserve an enemy of all people who took a serious risk, sacrificed his time, saved him, loved him with no strings attached and with no hope of gaining anything in return? Maybe nothing. Maybe the victim was undeserving. After all, wasn't he foolish to travel on this road, this dangerous road, all alone in the first place? The point is, it didn't matter. The Samaritan helped him unconditionally. He showed mercy just as God showed mercy to each of us. So then, are we deserving of the love and the forgiveness that God gives us? It doesn't matter. And of course, this is the real message of this parable. It reveals to us the truth of God's mercy. God's love for us is poured out unconditionally with no strings attached. You know, people have spent a lifetime trying to earn God's love by trying to be good trying to do everything right, trying to be successful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But God doesn't work that way. Without being deserving, God cares for us in an extraordinary way. This is such a powerful lesson because it's one of the most difficult things for us to learn. That God loves us no matter what. So if we can feel the grace that the beaten man experienced when he was helped by an enemy, surely we can grasp how much God loves us, not only when we're down and out, but all the time. And here's the best part. As God's love flows in and through us, it overflows into the lives of those around us and we can be good Samaritans for others. So the whole point of this parable of the Good Samaritan is so Jesus can show us the depths of God's love. And he answers the question, who is my neighbor, by giving us this unforgettable example of how to love those that we might not have chosen to love. And he doesn't let us get away from it by ignoring it. For Jesus, believing and knowing is not enough. The story of the Good Samaritan on the road to Jericho forces us to see ourselves on the roads that we travel every day. In 1975, a child named Raymond Dunn Jr. was born in the state of New York. The Associated Press reported that his birth, that at his birth, a skull fracture and oxygen deprivation caused severe intellectual disabilities. As the child grew up, the family discovered that he had other impairments. His twisted body suffered up to 20 seizures per day. He was blind, he was mute, and he was immobile. And if that wasn't enough, he had severe allergies that limited him only to one food, a meat-based formula produced by Gerber Foods. In 1985, Gerber Foods ceased production of the formula that Raymond Dunn Jr. depended on to survive. His mother scoured the country, buying up all the formula that stores had in stock accumulating cases and cases of the product. However, in 1990, her supply ran out. 
Without this particular food, Raymond Dunn Jr. would starve to death. In desperation, his mother appealed to Gerber Foods for help. The employees of the company listened and in an unprecedented action, volunteers donated hundreds of hours to bring out old equipment, set up production lines with permission from the Food and Drug Administration, and produced the formula all for one special boy. In January 1995, Raymond Dunn Jr., known as the Gerber Boy, died from his physical problems. However, during his lifetime, he called forth a wonderful thing called compassion. So seeing from the perspective of the victim can help us move from belief to action. By expressing our gratitude for God's love for us, we can act toward every one of our neighbors, as did the Good Samaritan, towards the victim of the story. And this is the good news today. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we may bear the fruit of your healing, mercy to a broken world. Lord, in your mercy. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to a, a new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, and harvest and gather. Lord, in your mercy. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up the community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy. Come near to all. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty. Hope where there is despair, love in the face of neglect, comfort where there is death and healing and illness. Lord, in your mercy. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten in silence, or avoided. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the saints who were revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by the witness, strengthen us to live in hope. Lord, in your mercy. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust those spoken prayers and those in the hearts of your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please show each other a sign of Christ's peace. You may be seated. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heads, hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. given for you. The body of Christ 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 given for you. 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 Yes. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. 
what is Christ doing for you? What is Christ giving for you? What is Christ giving for you? What is Christ giving for you? The body of Christ giving for you. 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 Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The 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 body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. That's okay. Yeah. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. It's coming. We're getting more. Okay. 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 Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. given for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Please stand as you are able. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. May our offerings reach out 
to bring hope and grace to our near and distant neighbors whom you know and love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, love your neighbor. 